Hello, you're watching The Shift Asia. I'm Frida Liu. The power of Black Soldier Fly Lava, BSFL, as a natural and efficient source of protein, uh, can help address global food security challenges. From animal feed, fertilizer to waste management, BioLoop plans to make an impact on food solutions. I'm here with Marjun Kit, CEO and co founder, uh, to talk a little bit more about this. So, uh, some people are still not aware of yeah. BSFL, right? But when did you, when did I guess BSFL start getting um, its commercial appeal from your understanding. Right. So first of all, Frida, thanks for having me on the shift. So I think BSFL is something that's been done in the backyards of many farmers mm. for decades. Right. But commercially, I think we're at a point to 2009 when Protix, the current largest insect producer, set up a ah. shop in Netherlands. Right. And they face a lot of challenges, a lot of headwinds, but you know, they're, still, they're still alive, they're still mm. pushing the boundary. Right. Uh, and we look to them for inspiration. So in 2009, the first really commercial facility got fundraised and then set up. I think the commercial viability became even stronger mm. during the pandemic. Okay. So during the pandemic, we had global increase in food prices from soybean for animal feed and fertilizers for crops. Right. So this is when the alternative protein and alternative fertilizer story became a bit more attractive. Mm. It garnered a lot more attention by media, by government, mm. and also by the livestock farmers or crop farmers themselves. So then that's when we got the ball rolling and BioLoop was started in 2020, okay. officially producing in 2021. So 2020 during the pandemic? Yes, that's right, that's right. Oh, that's an interesting story, right? The Just... pandemic was a tailwind, so it was not a headwind. It really did help us okay. uh, get our foot in the door for many conversations. Right, okay, so interesting. Now, um, for people who don't know uh, about BSFL, right, and think of the common house fly, yeah, yeah. right, can you explain the difference and its merits? Right, okay, so it's a, it's a very common question in a sense that, you know, it's a fly, right? What are the differences yeah. between flies? They're from the same family, the Thera. So, the housefly is known as a pest, mm. but the BSFL is not a pest. Okay. And the key reason is because of their livelihood. When they're adults, their life cycle, mm. the pest, the pest form will continue going to, to food sources, mm. decaying food sources or feces, gathering bacteria. So that right. is what a common housefly does. Yes. It still eats. Yeah. Whereas when you talk about the black soldier flies, after they become a fly, mm. they stop eating totally. So okay. what we see is that when they are larvae, they'll eat very voraciously. When they're flies, they stop. So they don't go to all these pathogenic sources. Mm -hmm. They don't transmit diseases. Mm. So that's the key differences between why one is a pest and one is not. Okay. In terms of the shape, you know, it's elongated. It's right. very docile. Mm. It's very, very harmless. It doesn't sting, it doesn't bite you at all. Mm. So it's a very friendly fly. Okay. And if you, don't, if you don't touch it at all, it just stays there. It lives to mate and then it just dies. Okay, so its function is when there are lava, right? Uh, and you know, how does this address, I guess, uh, some of the SDGs? And I guess you talked about food security, um, helping to reduce the cost of fertilizers and all yes. that. What, what other ways does it help with SDGs? If we align to the UN SDGs, there are, there are, there are quite a few that we, that we touch on. So that's, mm. you know, zero hunger, there's yeah. responsible production and consumption, there is climate action, life below water, life on land. But mm. I think the ones that are most relevant would be responsible production and consumption yeah. as well as climate action. Right. So I think we are very responsible. Uh, or, or the responsibility really is on us to manage different types of organic waste, be mm. it food waste or agricultural waste. So to consume in the, the, the next 100 years, for example, there has to be a sustainable solution. Mm. So the BSF will allow us to convert all these organic waste streams into usable uh, animal protein, mm. as well as fertilizers, so it's a two-in-one. And in terms of climate action, if you just left in a landfill, it will emit methane, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and all that. Mm. So instead of the carbon going to the atmosphere, it gets stored in the body of the lava. Right. So that makes it much better for ah. climate action. And we are helping many supermarkets, uh, as well as food factories and mills, right. manage their organic waste more sustainably, such that the carbon that's stored in their waste does not get admitted to the atmosphere. Wow. Okay. Now, what made you decide to go into this business? Um, not, my, my, I think my family has always been very much in agriculture. So growing up, I always tell my friends, you know, 
I'm going to be a farmer. Okay. And, and that and that elicits a lot of laughs from them. But I never thought I'll be an, an insect farmer. Okay. So the reason why I even found out about this industry was because whilst working in the UK, I was in venture capital. I saw a lot of you know funds flowing into insect protein. Mm. Then I was thinking to myself, why do they need so much money? Mm. And it was to build climate control systems because okay. the insects thrive in tropical weather. Okay. So perfect. Being, yes, perfect. Exactly. So being in a four seasons nation, it's quite expensive to mm. to do this. So I was working from home during the pandemic in Malaysia. And I just thought, you know, let's just try this out in a backyard sort of style. And it grew quite easily. Mm. So then I thought, okay, from a business perspective, uh, it makes sense for me to try something that I was very keen on, very curious about. And then from a more personal perspective, I think there's a very nice framework uh, led by Jeff Bezos about the regret minimization framework. And I thought that I would regret it far more if I did not try to do this and fail. Oh. Rather than, rather you know, kept in my my fairly you know decent job, but and, and not proceed with this project. So, it's meaningful to me. Okay. The ROI I think is calculated separately as well. Right. So then these are the the few reasons why I felt that there was a very strong pull for me to enter the BS Regret industry. Regret minimization what? framework. Framework. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I really enjoy. <laughs> okay. Now, what were the challenges in setting up something like this, right? I, right. I, I can imagine it would be the production. Oh, for sure. Okay. For sure. So, capital is a big constraint. Mm. But even before capital, knowledge is uh, something that, that we really had to fight very hard to achieve. Yeah. I won't say we're very knowledgeable now, we're still yeah. learning every day. So, because the industry is still in its infancy, you have to be a trailblazer in your own right. Mm. The insect is not new. But what the insect eats is quite new. Okay. So in Malaysia, it's going to be for us palm oil. Right. That's the palm. That that's the sector that is the okay. largest for us to get the waste. Mm. So palm oil as a feedstock to the larvae is something that is not well researched. Ah. So we had to do it ourselves. So the knowledge barrier was one. Secondly, was then the capital constraint mm. because you know it's a new industry. Yeah. Who's going to fund it? Yeah. So we look for grants, we look for loans, and we also. Um, fundraise internally mm. to build our very first facility. And only once that was up and running, did we then to proceed to get some nice government grants. Okay. So it was you know, a chicken and egg scenario. And finally, I think the market education was mm. something that was quite crucial for us to do. Mm. Very, very fortunate we started during the pandemic when everything was very expensive. Mm. So then at least the alternative protein and fertilizer got it's, 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 it's moment to shine, mm. so to speak, in a couple of years. So these were the barriers that if we started earlier, we may not be here. Okay, I'm curious, where is BSF originally from and what were they consuming if right. uh, palm oil is new to them, new right. cuisine for them? Right, so originally it's from South America. Okay. Some people also say Africa, but we believe it's from South America, okay. brought here you know, 50 over years ago. So now it's very tropical already. Okay. What they used to consume uh, varies depending on where you are in the world. I see. So they will consume agricultural byproducts. For example, if you just left um, a lot of fruit there to rot, okay. you'll get house flies, but you'll also get black soldier fry larvae. See. So they will, they, they are very versatile okay. insects. They eat many different things. You know, you go to a sewer system, you will see some over there. You go to a poultry farm, you'll see some over there. So it's very, you know, it's very agnostic to what right. they eat. Yeah. But the difference is that what happens when they turn to a fly, they're not harmful. Correct. That's the, Correct. Okay. Exactly. I'm learning. Okay. Yeah. Now, your products are suitable for um, animal feed to fertilizer. What's, what's the difference in production? This is your, your fertilizer. I think I think the, the cool thing about this is that it's hand in hand. It's not either or. It's okay. end and. So, while the larvae eat whatever waste you give to them, the larvae will grow in size. And after a certain amount of time, we will harvest them to become animal protein. We'll mm. roast them in a microwave. Mm. But as they eat, they excrete. And right. that is a fertilizer. So it's ah. protein and fertilizer hand in hand coming out at the same time with the same process, no additional cost. Okay. So in terms of volume of, you know, do we get more animal protein, do we get more fertilizers, really depends on what they eat. If they eat, you know, a lot of food waste, high in nutrients, you get, you know, very nice fat worms. If you eat something, for example, from the palm oil industry, mm. which is high in fiber, mm. the worms are smaller, mm. but you get a lot of fertilizers, right. you know, because high fiber, you know, ah. you tend to go to the toilet more. Okay. So, this is the differences in production, highly dependent on what they eat. 
Okay, well, who have been most of your customers? More B two B, B two C. What's the story here? Absolutely more B two B. Okay. So for the animal feed side, you have to go to the feed mills, and these are you know very really large large customers. Mm. Uh, similarly to the uh, to the estates, mm. because we sell, we we produce about 150 tons of fertilizer a month currently. That would have to go to the estates, palm oil as well as durian. So it's all very much B two B. But what we see here is one of our partnerships with 99 Speed Mart, where mm. because they send us their expired goods, okay. we will convert it into both protein and fertilizers, and the fertilizers go back on their shelves. So this is our Hi. first attempt on uh, B2C markets. Okay. And because 99 is, um, we think, the market leader in retail, they're also very sustainably focused. Very circular. Very, that, that, is, their, that is their goal. Right. And we'll be releasing a video later on for COP29. Okay. Okay, so interesting, change. right? Okay, and I guess like, uh, how receptive have Malaysian customers be? I mean, I I know you so B two B. I think we're getting it. B two C. What has the response been like? Do people they just do they are they, you know, paying attention to this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because I think, historically, for animal protein, you know, mm. it's a bit of a bit of a longer shot because mm. people are like, hmm, do they eat worms? They do, but yeah. that's B two B, and they understand that. For the fertilizers, though, it's super easy because yeah. you think about earthworms. Yeah. And everyone loves earthworms, Yay. right? And that's vermicompost. compost. Okay. So the acceptance is very, right. very easy for us to go to market. Right. So we think, you know, vermicompost, they love earthworms. So it makes the soil healthy, alive. Okay. And then purchasing it is not a problem. But I think the most important is the cost factor mm. because it's cheap. So 99 Speed Mart's um, uh, requirement was that it can't be too expensive. Right. And, right we make it cheaply. Okay. And the quality is still there. I'll see if my chili padi, you know. Uh, oh, absolutely spicy, padi. yeah. Right. Uh, what What about cost, right? How much cheaper are you compared to your conventional animal feed and fertilizers, right? right? right. So, uh, just percentage wise. Yes. Yeah. So, in terms of the main sources of animal protein, we talk mm. about soybean meal mm. and we talk about fish meal, both different sources, right? But Soybean meal is still very, very cheap. Right. So we tend to compare ourselves with, with fish meal. Okay. And we are almost at price parity with right. fish meal, at least in Malaysia. So that is a, a conversation that's much easier because mm. then you benchmark against a, a known commodity. Right. For fertilizers, it's a bit different. Mm. You have the organic fertilizers, which are at a certain level, and you have the chemicals, which are more expensive. Yes. Now, depending on who you speak to, if you speak to the bit of the older generation, it is all about yield and ah. the chemicals will produce very fast yields. But for the next few generations, talk about sustainability, about yes. generational farming, they know that organic matter is now more important yeah. than how fast they grow because every year you would have to pump in more and more chemicals yeah. to get the same yield because the, the absorption reduces if yeah. you don't put any organics. And, and, so yeah. that is why when you do a price comparison, it is somewhere in between mm. organic as well as chemical. Mm. Okay, so so it's not the price thing, but you have to think of running the business sustainably. Correct, correct. Right? That's right. Um, okay, and then of course you you know recently took part in the Alliance Bank Bismarck Challenge. Right? Yes. Uh, what what's I guess what's the objective of the funding? You always need funding, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, working capital is always good. Mm. We are doing new joint ventures, so some of that you know should we be lucky enough to get it, mm -hmm. we'll go into that joint funding capabilities. Right. But I think. More important than the funding is the credibility as well as exposure that the accelerator has given to us. Mm. Imagine if we won, right? Mm. Then people will start waking up to the fact that, you know, this is a sustainable business. You know, there is something like this right. out there. The younger generation is participating in national agricultural industries right. and businesses. That's one part. But the second part would then be on a financing level, you, know, you have a bank behind you. Mm. You have VCs or PEs behind mm. you. And then they start taking you seriously. That's a bit of a, for us, a stamp of credibility right. that we hope to get moving forward. Right. All the best. I'm very excited. Thank you, Frida. Uh, Thank you. And of course, you've been watching The Shift Asia.